Okay, uh, before we start, before we start Chayei Sarah, I just want to go back um, to make it just a little bit more clear. I told you yesterday the whole explanation of the Malbim and the Akida. And basically the idea was that if you look carefully in the verses, Hashem said it in a way that you could understand it in two ways. Does Hashem literally mean that you should give Yitzchak as an offering, that he should be the, so to speak, the offering itself? Or Hashem just asked him to bring him over there, to elevate him, to pick him up, but he didn't mean actually that Yitzchak should be the offering. That's basically the whole approach of the Malbim, that if you look carefully in the verses, actually it makes it more sense that Avram Avinu had to understand that Hashem didn't mean actually to kill Yitzchak, to slaughter Yitzchak, to bring him as an offering. He just brought him to bring him as an elevation over there in the mountain, and something else will be the offering. But Avram Avinu, with his great desire to do what Hashem wants, was thinking, oh, I'm thinking this way because I don't want to bring Yitzchak as an offering. He was thinking that he's not objective, he's subjective. So he didn't that's what the Malbim said. He didn't really look into it deep, deep, and to say that way because his will and his desire to do what Hashem wants. Meaning, the idea of thinking that maybe it does mean an offering, and all what I, I don't want it to be offering is because I don't want to slaughter Yitzchak. I don't want to lose Yitzchak. So thinking that way, Yavram says, you know what, I'll go forward and I'll do it no matter what. So it's a doubt, I understand, but I'll go for it to do it no matter what, because I want to do the will of Hashem. The desire, the great desire of doing the will of Hashem. He says, I'm moving forward, let's see what happens. And I'm willing to give Yitzchak even. And like you see, okay, so he moved forward and Hashem stopped him. Okay, so that was the Malba. I just want to show you in the verse itself, just go back a minute again to 22, verse 2. So the Malbin says like this, look at the verse, you okay? You have a 22, verse 2? Vayomer kachna, please take, et bincha, et yechidecha. Take your son, the only one we mentioned yesterday that we specify, right, exactly, right? Uh, he said, well, I have two sons. Well, the one that you love, I love both. So then Hashem says, Yitzchak, velech lecha, and go, el eretz hamoriah and go to the land of Moriah. So the Malbim points out, one second, stop here. Hashem says to them, take the Yitzchak to where? To Mount Moriah. So what is the second part of the verse? Bring him up to Ola. To one of the mountains, Asher Omar Elecha. You already said that you're going to bring Yitzchak to the, to the mountain of Moriah. So what is this second part? And bring him up as elevation, right? So the Malbim says that's, that's exactly the idea. You could learn the verse, Yitzchak take to Mount Moria. And then bring him up as elevation to the one of the mountains, Asher Omar Elecha, that I'll tell you, that's referring to the offering. Yitzchak bring to Mount Moria. And then after, I'll tell you, which offering, what to bring in one of the mountains that I'll tell you. So that's not talking, Valeu Sham means, and I'll tell you what to bring over there. Yitzchak take to Mount Moriah, you okay? You see, you understand? Valeu Sham and elevate him, bring him up over there as an offering, El Alechadarim in one of the mountains. Asher Omer Elecha, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, is it Yitzchak or something else? That's how the Malbim points out. More than that, I'll just finish with this. Haleu Sham, the, the Malbim says, the, the word Haleu, it means elevate. It doesn't say Hakriveu, bring him as an offering. Hakriv, right? We do, the word Haleu should also hint out from Avinu that it just means bring him up, elevate him, but not the offering itself. 
that's another hint of Avinu, right, that he had to understand. But basically, that's what the Malbim is saying, guys. Just wanted to make it clear that you could break the verse and it was told to Avraham Avinu in a way that Hashem wants him. It could be as an offering, it could be not. Yes? It's more of, right, correct. It could be, it could be, it more, it more makes sense that it shouldn't be Yitzchak, but it could be Yitzchak, right? So bottom line, the idea is just the idea, the Malbim says his idea. That's the main thing to remember, guys, that it was told to Yitzchak in a way that he could understand it both ways, that Yitzchak should be the offering or something else should be the offering. The Malbim points out that actually it makes more sense that Yitzchak shouldn't be the offering, but Avraham Avinu with his great desire is willing to do it, the will of Hashem. Right. Same area. So that, was, that was the same, right? So that's why I said that, that's actually what happens in the end, right? That's what Sam is saying, guys, right? Hashem's, he, Avraham Avinu is going with his will, with his desire. I know that it's a doubt, but I'm willing to give my son to Hashem. I'm willing to give, right, the best thing in the world to Hashem. And an mm-hmm. angel comes and says, hey, stop it, don't do it. And what comes up? A deer, a ram, right, in the middle of nowhere. So that's like Hashem said in the beginning. Don't worry, you go to there, and I'll tell you what to do. Right? Instructions to be followed. This is also very interesting, guys, because not always Hashem will tell us you know, the whole thing. Take the few steps, follow the steps that Hashem wants you to do, and don't worry, you'll have instructions later. Meaning it doesn't, Hashem doesn't have to give you the whole story, what's going to happen beforehand. You do your steps, you stop, and the rest will come. Details to follow. Okay, guys, let's move on. Let's go to our parasha, Chayet Sarah. So, Vayehu Chayei Sarah, so the life of Sarah was Mea Shana, 100 years, Esrim Shana, 20, Sheva Shanim, 7, Shnei Chayei Sarah. The years, the life of Sarah. So, what is the connection, the death of Sarah today, what we learned before, what the Torah wrote before, the Akedah? So Rashi brings down that it was actually because of that, that she heard the rumor that Yitzchak was binded and she didn't even manage to finish to hear the end that he was not killed. She just heard the beginning that he was binded and she passed away. That's what Rashi brings. But there's another idea over here. The parasha, the, first, the last week's parasha, again, Vayera ends. Who was born in last week's parasha? Yeah. Rivka. Right? If you look in chapter 22, if you go back a minute to 22, Chaf, Pasuk Chaf, after the Akedah, the Avram Avinu goes back to Be'er Sheva, so it says, Vayera Dvarim Eile, Vayugad la Avram, Avram was told, Hine Yalda Milka, here the, here's the crashing news. Milka, the wife, your sister-in-law, the wife of Nachol, gave birth. And she had uh, these guy, these uh, children, Uts, Booz, Kamuel, Keshed, right? And they had one, right? Idlaf, Betuel, and then Betuel, Pasuk 23, Chav Gimel, Uvetuel yalad et Rivka. So, Betuel gave birth to this girl named, no, not he gave birth, sorry, he had a daughter named Rivka. And Laban? Didn't mention her. What? Uh, that's right. So, not significant at this point. That's the main, correct. What we really want to know is Rivka. So, what's going on here? So, there are a few things going on here. Why we write this in the Torah? Who cares that Rivka was born? Why is this so significant? 
So she's a great nephew of Avraham Avinu. Yeah, anybody holds that? You realize that? Right? She's a granddaughter of Nachor. Nachor is a brother of Avraham Avinu. And she's a granddaughter of Nachor. So she's a great nephew of Avraham Avinu. Uh, Rivka. So, what is going on here? A few things going on here. Rashi brings an explanation that when Avram Avinu and Yitzchak are coming back after the Akeda, after that experience that Yitzchak was almost killed and he didn't die in the end, so Avram Avinu is thinking to himself, oh my gosh, I almost lost my son and he didn't have children. So maybe it's the wrong thing that I did that he wasn't married. Because would he die in the Akeda, he wouldn't have children. So maybe it's the wrong thing that I did that he wasn't in Shiduchim, right? He wasn't dating. Maybe I had to find him a Shiduch. So, so to speak, it was like a wake-up call to Avram Avinu. Oh my gosh, maybe I really had to marry him already. That's what Rashi brings. And Hashem says to him, no, don't worry. His Shiduch, his Bashert, was not born yet. Only now, after the Akedah, Rivka is born. So it came as an answer to Avram Avinu, don't have worries. Oh my gosh, Yitzchak is getting old and I, he didn't get married. And I almost lost him and he wouldn't have children. Don't worry about all that. His shidduch that I want is not ready yet. Only now this is happening. Okay? That's one, yeah. If it, is it, yeah. She was born when he was thirty-seven, yeah. and they waited a few years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Second, guys, let's go back to pasuk twenty-three, to chapter twenty-three. So, second, the commentary says like this: Hashem runs a world that you have to have enough tzaddikim around. So, Sarah doesn't pass away before Rivka is born. The tzaddikim in the world is like sunrise. The light that they give to the world, the mitzvahs that they do, the good deeds that they do. So, it's like the light, the sunrise. The tzaddikim passing away is losing the light and it's like sunset. So, Hashem brings the sunrise before he brings the sunset. Rivka is born. Rivka, that she will be a righteous woman, a tzaddiket, she is born before Sarah is passed away. And that's why exactly, again, you see that last week's Pasha ends with the birth of a new woman, Rivka, that she's going to be righteous. That's the sunrise. And this week's Pasha is the death of Sarah, but Hashem says, don't worry, I already placed Another tzaddiket in the world, and that is Rivka. So, okay, so sunrise before the sunset. Meaning Hashem already planted some seeds, right, and puts the tzaddikin, the tzaddiket over here in the world before we lose this great tzaddiket, Sarah. We have the new one in place. She's eventually going to replace Sarah. What do you see in this verse a little bit strange? The life of Sarah is 100 years, 20 years, 7 years. Separation of the years. The separation of the years, right. 120 and 7. So Ashi brings down to tell us that it was all complete and all good. She was 100, like 20, is a rule that the, the Beisdin in Shemaim doesn't punish human beings be, below the age of 20. So she was a hundred like twenty, meaning clean for sin, and also pure like a child. So a hundred like twenty, and twenty like seven, meaning pure like a child, seven years old. And that's why in the verse it says, repeats again, Shnei chayei Sarah. This is the life of Sarah. You know that people could live the whole life, but they're not really living. What's the definition of life? Not constant. Toil. No, challenges and doing things. Accomplishing. Oh! 
Life is about growth, guys. To accomplish, to move on, to move forward. No matter what you go through, you see the Avram of Ansar also didn't have an easy life. He went through some stuff also. Each one has his challenges and his, what they say in Yiddish, his pekalach. Right? His cargo, right? His bags that he has to carry in life. Each one has his thing. But life is about moving forward, about growth. And that's why it says over here, Shnei Chayei Sarah. She lived all her life, 127 years. She's not just here on earth, moving around, going from place to place and doing nothing. She was alive. She was accomplishing. She was growing. And all the years were complete in a good way that she was living the life. Unfortunately, you have people that are alive, but they're not accomplishing, they're not moving on. So it's really sort of a death. If you're not accomplishing and you're not moving on, so it's death. Sarah is the idea teaching us that all her life she was living the life, she was accomplishing, growing, and the years of her life, meaning all the years was years of life. Shnei chayei Sarah was years of life. Pasuk bet. Vatama tzara, so Sarah dies, bekriyat arba, in this place called kriyat arba, hi chevron, be'eret knan, in the land of knan, at that time was called the, the land of knan, vayavo Avraham lispod lesara, Avraham comes to give eulogy lesara, veliv kota, and to, car, to, to cry. So, the commentaries are bothered with the following. It says she dies where? Kiyatarba. 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 He Hebron, right? So it says she dies in Hebron. Kiyatarba is Hebron. In the land of Khan. Vayavo Avram. Avram came. So the commentaries are bothered from where did he come? Coming from where? Oh. oh, so the commentaries, Rashi, the Ramban, and others, give two explanations to the following. We know that it says that Avraham Avinu settled in Be'er Sheva. It also says that after the Akedah, he returned to Be'er Sheva. So you might say the following, that Avraham Avinu at this time was living in Be'er Sheva, still in Be'er Sheva, and it happened to be that Sarah went to Hebron because her death had to be over there and her burial had to be over there. So, so to speak, Hashem worked it out that she will be in Hebron at the time of the death. And Avram Avinu understood that that's a message that she has to be buried over there. So, Vayavo Avram, Avram is coming from Be'er Sheva to bury her over here. That's one option. Second option is, yeah, Avram Avinu and Sarah were living in Be'er Sheva, like it says earlier in the parasha before. It says that Avram Avinu planted Eshel, Vayita Eshel. What's Eshel? So it can, a fruit tree, an orchard. Uh, that's one, uh, one opinion in the Gemara in the Talmud that he planted an orchard, meaning he settled over there. Some say that it means Eshel stands for food, Achila. The Aleph is Achila. Shtia, drinking. Lena, sleeping. Meaning he planted an Eshel. is saying he planted a tent over there offering hospitality that people could come eat, drink by him, and even sleep by him. So the second approach is like this. Yeah, Avram Avinu and Sarah in Be'er Sheva. And after the Akedah, Hara Moria, Avram Avinu returns to Be'er Sheva. And after that, they actually moved already to Hebron. So that's another approach that they moved to Hebron just before the death of Sarah. They're already living in Hebron. Okay? Third approach is that Avram Avinu and Sarah already moved to Hebron before the Akedah. That's the third approach that the Ramban brings, that they 
were living in Be'er Sheva, like we all know, for a while. And they were told already, Oavo Mavinu decided himself to move to Hebron, right, a few years before the Akedah. And when the Akedah happens, the Akedah, where, where the Akedah happened? Where's Mount Moria? Jerusalem, right, the Temple Mount. After the Akedah, Avram Avinu just goes to visit his old friends in Be'er Sheva, but he didn't mean to settle over there because he doesn't live there anymore. So, so to speak, after the Akedah, he pops over for a visit in Be'er Sheva to visit his old friends, his follow-ups, etc. And Sarah dies, so he goes back right away to where he was, to Hebron. Okay? So there are a few approaches with where exactly Avram Avinu and Sarah are living at this point. Did they move already to Hebron before the Akedah? Or after the Akedah they moved to Hebron? Or it could be that altogether they are living in Be'er Sheva and just Sarah happened to be to die in Hebron. That's most commentaries. The Ramban says, you know, but the truth is, he shouldn't be bothered with the word Vayavo Avraham. Vayavo Avraham means that he came. When somebody is starting to do something, it means he put his act together and he came to do it. So not necessarily, a, the Ramban points out that everybody's coming to explain he's coming from where. But the truth is, he's here, he's around. So is it that living in Hebron or in Be'er Sheva, whatever it is, but the Ve'yavo over here just means that he started to take care of something. He started to do something. Ve'yavo Avram, what Avram is coming to do? Oh, to give eulogy, to, to, to cry for her, to arrange the burial, to arrange the funeral. And that's what it means, Avraham, Ve'yavo Avram. Not that he's coming from a different city, from a different place. They were here together, wherever it is, wherever they were living. And all what it means, Ve'yavo, he just started, he got up, meaning to get organized for the funeral, for the burial, and such. Okay, now, so, and that's what the Ramban means. Actually, this is the simple understanding, because you see in the verses that that's what's happening. Avram is getting up to take care of the funeral of his wife. Does Avram Avinu know where to bury her? So, it seems to be yes. He knew that she should be buried in a special place. And this is also a mes message for us, for the Jews, that the burial is not just to solve a physical problem. Here I have a dead body, I don't know what to do, and it's inappropriate just to leave it. A burial means to have a burial, a uh, proper place for the burial means that is a neshama over here. Life goes on. After the burial, the neshama it says the idea is like this, the neshama goes up. But the Shucha idea, it's a Kabbalistic, mystical idea that part of the Neshama goes around the grave. You're familiar with that. You heard this idea? It says not to walk in a cemetery, not to go there at night, not to walk, not to sleep there. If you go for a certain thing specific to pray and that, so you could go. It says not to walk around or not to sleep there at night. So the Shucha idea, the impure things going on there. So meaning the idea is like this, Avram Avinu is going to be very specific because he wants a special place for to bury Sarah because he's told, really the message is that she should be buried in a special place because again the burial is just not to solve a physical problem, there's also a spiritual idea where the person is being buried. For example, it says not to bury an evil man next to a righteous man. Well, if it's only a physical thing, you burn the body, who cares? So who cares? Take the great tzaddik in the world, right? And take the troublemaker of town that everybody hates and evil and bury them one next to each other. What's the problem? Right? So that's the answer. So it's not only a physical idea of solving a problem. Oh, here's a body, you have to take care of it. Is a spiritual aspect to it also, and the when the when a man when Sarah passes away and she's being buried, it doesn't mean the story is over. It means there's a continuity over here. The neshama goes up, 
but it's such an idea as a spirit, a part of the neshama that sense and realizes where the body is, where the body is buried. So meaning that's a, also an idea that is a continuity, the story doesn't end. That means that is a himshechiyut, there's a continuity to this. Life doesn't end over here, the neshama goes up, and the neshama does sense and does realize where she's buried, and that's why Avram is very specific where she should be buried. So that's the introduction. That's why Avram Avinu wants it in a certain place. Now, he has to work it out. Does he have that site? Is it ready? No. He has to go negotiate with the local people. He has to negotiate. Are they okay with this? Not okay with this? He has to buy it, maybe. So let's see in the verses what's going on. And by the way, in the time of this brought down, that this is also one of the tests of Avam Avinu. He, Avam Avinu, the rich man, Hashem blessed him, that I'll increase your name, bless you, give you all what you want. Look at him. He has to get up and negotiate with his neighbors to find a burial site for his wife. So in the time it's brought down that this is one of the tests of Avram Avinu. Just like he came and there was no food, right? And he had to go travel to Egypt. Here he goes, his wife is here. And now he has to start the process of dealing with the nice neighbors and doing him a favor to find a burial site for his wife. Right. How so, long that time was? Oh, so right. So that's a good, that is a good question. It could be all this is happening in one day. I'm not sure. It doesn't doesn't. Sp- I didn't see it in verse, but it could be it's all happening in one day. So let's see the verses because there are some insights over here. The negotiation with Avo Mavino with his neighbors, but but basically the idea is like I said to you that it was important to have Avinu where to bury his wife. It, he, didn't, he wanted a proper place. So let's go. Gimel. Vayakam Avram me'al pnei mito. He gets up from his dead, uh, the, the, his wife that passed away, and he's going to the people of Bnei Chet. Vaydaber el Bnei Chet. Those are the people that were around. Those are the people over there. And he says to them like this, Dalid, Ger v'toshav anochi imachem. Ger means, what is Ger? Stranger. Stranger. Toshav? A resident. A resident. Ger v'toshav anochi imachem. I'm a stranger and I am a resident amongst you. Tnuli achuzat kever. Give me a burial site. Imachem with you amongst you in this area. Ve'ekberal bury me till milfanai. So Avram Avinu is saying like this. One second. Is he a stranger or resident? It's a contradiction, yeah? What is he saying to them? Ger ve'toshav. I'm a stranger and a resident. Maze, he's contradicting himself, no? So the Yechaim, yeah, or Ger Otoshav, what is he? Oh, so he's saying to them, guys, yes, I'm a stranger too now, but I'm going to settle over here. And that's why I want a burial place to, wait, to bury my wife. But, and here's the big thing to understand, he's not just asking one slot to bury his wife. It was common back in the day that people had family sites. That's called achuza. Achuza means it's a, fam- a family lot, a family site that all the families bury over there. So this is the family of Nechet. This is the family of Ephron. I'm asking not only to bury my wife, Sarah, I want to use it in the future for other family as well. Now, the rule is, the rule is that for strangers, you don't allow that. The local people don't give it to strangers. This idea of a burial site in a city, in a country where they live, you don't give it to strangers. 
you give it only to important families, right? Chashuvim, people that are important, the people that are here for years and, and such, they have the rights to have a achuza, a burial, a family burial site. So Ava Mavinu is saying to them like this, Ger v'toshav. Up till today, I was a ger. But you should know, I'm planning to settle over here. I'm, going, I'm planning to be a, to live here, to be a resident. So ger v'toshav anochi yimachem. What is he asking? Look carefully. Tnuli, give me achuzat kever. Not only a burial lot to bury Sarah, I want a burial site, a whole area that it should be mine and my family. Achuzat kever imachem amongst you. Ve'ekbera, and let me bury meti milfanai, and let me bury the dead body that is in front of me. What they answer him. Vayanu bneichet, the local people answer him, et avram lemorlo to say to him, Shameini, listen to us, Adoni, Master. Nasi Elokim ata betocheinu. You are considered, although you just came, just a while ago, you wasn't here for many years, right? It's not that you're here for so long. But we respect you, we honor you. Nasi ata Elokim ata. You are the president of God amongst us, ata betocheinu. Bimivchar kivreinu. In the best of the burial cemetery, you could bury at Metecha. Ish mimenu et kivro. No one will stop from you to bury. Bnei Chet answering and saying like this. Whoa, 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 Avinu. We respect you. We honor you. We, are, we understand that you're very special. We, we got that and we actually respect you. But we can't give you a chuzat kever. We just could give you a place to bury Sarah. The custom was, like I said to you, that the important, the rich people, the important people had family burial sites. But other people just had a public cemetery that was open to everybody. So they say to him, Ava Mavinu, we well respect you, we really honor you, but it's just something that we can't change the rules. This is the rules of the town. Meaning that we can give you a chuzat keva, we can give you a family site, but it's not because that we don't respect you. You're president. You're very important to us. But these are the rules. What we could do. And you look carefully. That's what they say, right? Shameinu, listen to us. Adoni, a master. We do respect you. In the cemetery, right? You could choose whatever you want. The best. Nobody will stop you. So, Ava Mavino, uh, right, obviously doesn't like this idea, right? He wants a certain place, right? He doesn't want to be Barry Sarah in a cemetery over there in the area with all the other, right, Bnei Chet. It's a very specific place. Let's see. Vayakam Avram, Vayishtachu la'am Aretz. So Avram stands and he bows to them, Lebnei Chet. Pasuk Chet. Vayidaber itam. <clears throat> if you really want, what's it? If you really wish, if you really want, that I should be able to bury my dead body, listen to me. So if you really want to help me, guys, the cemetery option is not really an option. I need a specific place. I need the place of Ephron ben Tzocha. V'yiten li, pasuk tet, he should give me et ma'arat ha-machpela. He should give me the cave that is called Machpela. Asher lo, that he owns it. Asher b'kce sadeu, it's the edge of his field. There's a cave over there that is called ma'arat ha-machpela. The people know over there that that cave is called Machpela. Where is that place? Where is that cave? In the edge, in the border of the field, Asher Biktesadeu, in next, just next to the field of Ephron, is a cave that is called Machpela. I want that cave. Bekesef Male. What is he saying, Avam Avinu? Loads of money. 
with the full amount of money, bekesef male, the full amount of money. I'm not going to negotiate him and not try to, you know, drop him down. Hey, give me this, give me that. I'll give him the full amount. Bekesef male yitnena li, he should give it to me. Betochechem lachuzat kever. Oh, so he said. So first of all, two things are going out here to realize. First of all, Ava Mavinu wants this place, this cave. Ava Mavinu is saying to them like this: Hey guys, right? You told me that is a problem that you can give a burial, a family burial site to strangers. That's the rule of the place, and it's only for certain families and certain peoples because respect and honor. People that were here for hundreds and years, we could give it to them. They have it already. But you, that you, relatively, you knew, we can't give it to you. Ava Mavino is saying to them, you know what? Since that that's the site that I want, is Ava Mavino, uh, the Maratha Machpelah, Ephron is a judge. He's the leader amongst that community. Speak to him that he should give me the cave as a gift. Ve'yitenli, the verse says in the beginning, ve'yitenli. And if you're worried about, oh, but, you know, he wants to make money, in the side thing, I'll give him money. Kesef male itnenali. I'll give him, right, without knowing, right, I should give him, I'll give him money. So meaning the idea is like this. The Malbim explains the following. I want the cave as a burial site, like I said, right, like we said. You guys are telling me you can't do it. Speak to Ephron. Let's speak to Ephron. Ephron is a ruler, the judge over here. He could change things around. Maybe this idea that you can't give a family burial, burial site means you can sell. But maybe as a gift, Ephron is the ruler, and he could say to the people of Bnei Chet, Hey guys, right? Rule number 18 and 19, right, is... You can give burial sites to other people, right? To strangers. That means you can sell to them. But if I wish to give a gift, I could give a gift. So it's like opening the door for Ephron that he's the one that could do this. And he could give it to me as a gift. No worries. Right? You could change the rules a little bit around. And it's actually not contradicting the rules. You can sell. Maybe all what it means is you can sell. But you could give it as a gift. And who can make that decision? Ephron. So tell him that he should give me as a gift. And I will give him money in a side. He shouldn't worry. Okay? That's what he's saying. The Ephron, right? That's what he wants to offer. So meaning, let's work it out, right? It's a loophole over here. It's things to talk about. You're not selling. You're giving to me as a gift. Maybe a gift is okay. And who make that decision? Ephron. What does answer, Ephron answer? The Ephron is sitting amongst the people of Pnei Chet. And he answers at Avram. He says to Avram, in the ears, Pnei Chet. So Ephron is answering Avram and he's saying to him like this in 11. You Dalef. Lo Adoni. Nah, you didn't get it right. This problem applies also for a gift. Not only for selling, it applies also for a gift. Lo Adoni Shomeni. Lo Adoni. You didn't get it right. You can't, uh, I cannot give it to you as a burial site even for a gift. The only thing that I could do is the following. I could give you the field. The cave asherbo lecha netatia leinei bnei ami the Malbim again points out and says like this. Ephron is saying like this. I cannot give you, it doesn't matter, I can't give you directly only the cave. This is the rule of the town. This is the rules. I, even me, I can change it. It's not only the town here. It's the region over here. That's the rules. I can't change it. So it's not flexible. That's something that we could do about it. I cannot give you the cave itself for a burial site for the family. What I could do is the following. The cave is right next to my field. 
I'll give you or sell you the field. The field is just so many times bigger than the cave. So once I sell or give you the field, automatically you'll get the cave. Because if F1 is selling the field, guys, how he'll get to the cave? There's no way that he could get to the cave. So automatically when you're selling the field or giving the field, you're giving automatically the cave, the Marata Machpelah. It's included. So what F1 is saying, this is what we could do. I cannot give you the cave itself. Those are the rules. You cannot have it as a burial site. Forget about that. What I could do is to sell or give you the field. With having the field, you could bury Sarah. Okay? Now, you okay? You got it? That's what Ephraim is saying. And it fits very well in the Psukim, right? Lo Adoni Shomeni. Listen, Lo Adoni. It's not like you think that I could change the rule. This is what we could do. Hasadeh natati lach. What's Hasadeh natati lach? The field I'll give to you. Vehamara asher bo. And the cave that is in it. Lecha netati. I'll give it to you. Leinei bnei ami. Netati alech. Lecha to you. Kvoret metecha. Ephon is saying, this is the trick that we could do. I'll sell or give you the field. And you automatically get, it will be included the cave, but you'll get it just to bury Sarah, not a burial site. What Avram Avinu is going to ask and say to him like this. One second, if you give it to me as a gift, right? You'll give me the field and you'll give me the cave and I want it to be a burial site. If people will find out later, that I'm turning over to a family site, a burial site, they might come and say, whoa, 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 you're using it in the wrong way. Give me back the gift. And that's why Avam Avinu is going to approach Ephraim and say to him, I want it to be a sell, not a gift. Avam Avinu says, I want to give you 400 shekel, and I want it to be a sell, not a gift. Meaning, you'll sell to me the field. Including in that, I get the cave. Once I have that, I could do whatever I want. That's what's going on over here. And that's why Avram Avinu says to Ephraim, listen, take the money from me. Okay, so I'm just jumping now to Pasuk Tetzayin. So that was the negotiation over here, guys. Ephraim is saying, you have to take the field. That's the only way that you could get the cave. But you have to take the, the field. I'll sell or give you the field. And Avram Avinu chose to pay. Vayishma Avram el Ephron, Vayishkol Avraham le Ephron et a kesef, the money, Asher di Berbo's nechet, Arbama or Chekel kesef over la soche. And he gives him big coins over la soche. What was the money back in the day? Real. Real silver, yeah? it goes with the weight. You had small coins, big coins, but money was money, yeah? It was not, uh, was not printed in a machine. Money was real money, it was coins of silver. Avram Avinu gave him 400 coins over la socher, meaning coins that are good, that are easy to give them over. It was such a concept back in the day, good coins and bad coins. Coins that will get scratched and damaged, not every shop will accept it. They'll look on the coin and say, ah, bad coin, we don't want it. And sometimes you have to, let's say if it was a coin of a dollar, so sometimes the seller told you, okay, we consider this only 90 cents because it has damage, scratches, it's hard to get rid of it. Ava Mavinu gave to him the best coins that are possible. 400 big coins that are easy to, to, to transfer them, to, get, to pass it over, to give it over to the next deal. So this is what's going on over here, guys. So eventually, Avram Avinu managed to do this deal with Ephron. And he wanted a specific place, and he worked it out by buying the field and getting the cave that will be included. Once Avram Avinu has the cave, he could do whatever he wanted. It's not that they gave it to him to a family site. He bought the field, he got the cave, and so to speak, the seller, the, bar, the buyer, sorry, is doing it on his own. That was the plan of Avram to do it in, in this way, that he should be a burial family site, not only to bury Sarah, it should be a family thing. One thing we learned from here, guys, 
Ephron is exactly the opposite of Avram Avinu. When Avram Avinu bumped into the three people last week, right, Yuda, what did he say to them? Come over. And what is he offering them? When he, when he approaches them. More bread. bread? Water. Come. Wash, wash your legs. Wash your feet. Bread and water. Very simple. He calls them over and what does he serve them? Milk. Oh, massive meal. What are you talking? Meat. The, the Midrash says that he gave them tongues with mustard. He gave them a fancy schmancy Waldorf Astoria meal. So what do you learn from Avram Avinu, guys? You talk a little bit, you do a lot. That's what the Mishnah in Avot says. Emor me'at, Right? Don't talk too much. Do! It's all about what you do, not what you talk. That's Avram Avinu, guys. Emor me'at, bread, water, just come in. Wash your legs, wash your feet from the dust, from the dirt. Have some bread, we'll give you a sandwich. And what he gives them? A festive meal. What is Ephron? The other way around. In the beginning, he says to Avraham Avinu, No, I don't need the 400, the, the 400 coins. Forget about it. We're such good friends. We don't need it. And what it ends up? He takes from him and takes from him the best of the best, right? So he talks a lot and does nothing. So, right? That's the lesson that we learn from here, guys. To be like Avraham Avinu, not like Ephraim. Don't talk too much, right? Talk, that's exactly the opposite. Talks a lot and does nothing. Chazak Baruch, guys.